Hi, welcome to video on banking put together by Ben Jorgens, Financial Empowerment Officer for Old National Bank. We're going to be talking about financial literacy today in this video. We're going to cover the financial basics, do an introduction to checking, budgeting, saving tips, and money management tips for a college student. We're going to start with banking basics, the nuts and, nuts and bolts of banking. Five reasons to use a financial institution include it saves you money, it's safe, it's convenient, there's security, and it helps you save for the future. There are two types of deposit accounts, a checking account and a savings account. Checking account has debit cards to go along with them or credit cards depending on your type of account. Savings accounts don't and that's generally just a direct deposit and a direct withdrawal. Now we're going to talk about checking. First part about checking is you have to know how to write a check. This is what a check looks like. Henry Wells and Mary Wells are the people whose name are on the count. Right below that is their address and um, now we're going to talk about what each of these lines means. The first line is where you put the date. That's the date that you wrote the check. The second line is who you're paying it to. In this case, it's Northwest Electric. The third line is the amount the check is for, and that's numbers. The fourth is the amount the check is worth, but it's in words. The fifth line is signed right before that, and that's where you sign your name. And the sixth one is the memo line, and that's where you put what it's for. So in this case, it's the electric bill. A lot of times, you really want to put what it's for so you remember that, or the, place, um, the person or the place you're writing the check for wants you to write something in the memo line. Now this is your checkbook, um, and this is where you keep track of um, all your expenses. So in the first column, that's the number, the checking number. Um, so 382, that's the Northwest Electric check. Um, and this Third, uh, second column, sorry, that's the date that you wrote the check or the date you um, paid for something or deposited something. And the third column, that's the description of transaction. That's like the restaurant you went to dinner for or the deposit or where you bought um, your shoes or the Northwest Electric for that bill. The fourth column is the payment, the de debit. That's when you're subtracting something from your account. Um, so in this, uh, in the first um, line, it's sixty dollars for the Northwest, Northwest Electric bill. And then in the fifth column, we have um, some different letters. And the number five, that's D, that's the deposit code. Number six, that's the HCM code. Um, not everyone uses these. That's usually if you have a fee associated with that or something. Um, the seventh column is the deposit. That's when you're gaining money. And then the eighth column is balance. And make sure you keep up with a plus and a minus so the balance is correct. Um, and the little uh, line splitting it is so you know on the left hand side that's the dollar amount, on the right hand side that's um, the cents. Endorsing check. Um, to deposit a check or to get cash from a check, you have to have the name of a person in the back. So the first one is just a blank endorsement. You just sign your name. Um, that way, so whoever wanted to could. Um, cash the check or deposit it, it in their account. The second one is for a special endorsement. Um, that's if you wanted to pay to the order of someone. Um, that's a little bit more rare. And the third one is restrictive endorsement. That's for deposit only. Um, that's this example. And that way it's only that um, for deposit. You can't cash it. This is your monthly statement you're going to get from your bank. Um, the num by number one, that's the name of your bank. And it has the address below. And then number seven is by the number, and that's what you need to call or you need to go in person if your um, statement is incorrect. The second part is for the um, who it's for. So again, for Henry and Mary Wells, uh, and then their address. Number four, that's the date. Um, that's usually the date that it was uh, the transaction was complete. No, number three, that's by the deposits. Look at the deposits and withdrawals; they match. Um, and number five is the balance at the end. And number six is your starting balance, and then your amount of money you had to deposit, the amount of money you had to withdraw, charges and fees, um, and the balance. So it's very important that you match the date and the description and the amount of money withdrawing and then the balance to make sure it all adds up correctly. Because, and remember, if in your checkbook, 
we'll talk about next. Um, this is where you're supposed to balance, make sure everything is correct. Do the checkbook uh, match up with your statement from your bill? Do your checks that you wrote, do they match the right number going with the right um, deposit or withdrawal? Now, this is a check register, which is a little bit different, but it's the same idea. You start with a balance of 50, and then you went to Coffee Mart, so you took it out 1975, and that's how much you had left. Now, we're going to talk about some good advice to prevent ID theft. Order your checks from your financial institution. Sign the back of your credit and debit cards and include the words photo ID required. This means that in order for you to use your debit or credit card, there has to be a photo ID and the names have to match. This obviously limits identity theft. Utilize online bill pay through your financial institution. And do not leave your wallet, purse, or um, in a car in plain view. And lock your valuables at home in a safe or a drawer or a cabinet. Don't give out personal information over the phone unless initiating call. Also, use a shredder before putting personal information in the trash. Don't throw away pill bottles with um, prescription information on the bottle. Verify all accuracy on your account information. And update firewalls and antivirus software on your home computer. Always remember, if it sounds too good, be, too good to be true, it is. So now we're going to talk about the availability of funds in your account. Um, because depending on what type of institution you have, um, sometimes you can't access all your funds immediately. Most banks make available um, your funds in one to, two, one to two business days. Most financial institutions give you immediate availability of your funds if they're electronically deposited in your bank account by means of direct deposit. So we're going to talk about preparing a budget. Track daily spending, determine income and expenses, find ways to decrease spending, and finally find ways to increase income. So keep track of the daily spending diary. What do you spend money on? I mean, not just bills, but I mean food and clothes, um, movies, anything and everything. Now here's um, your monthly income and expense worksheet. We're gonna, um, so we have the income part first. So you put your wages down, anything you get, child support, Social Security, anything else that's regular, not something that maybe happens like raise. Don't put that in there. It has to be every single month. Now your expenses. So you have fixed and you have flexible. With fixed, that means um, you have your rent, and your taxes, insurance, car payments, um, health insurance, everything you pay every single month that does not change. It's constant. Um, and then keep a little money for yourself. You have to spend money on yourself every single time. It's usually a very small amount. And yourself could also include if something else happens every single month they have to pay money for. Flexible is money that you spend every single month, but it's not necessarily always, always the same amount. So like your gas, electric, and water bills. Those are some things that are really big and that happen every month, but they um, decrease or increase depending on the month. And good ways to cut down on your expenses is if you cut down on those type things by using um, better light bulbs or more efficient appliances. Savings. Sometimes you save a lot this, in the month, sometimes you don't. Your cell phone bill, another huge bill that you can cut down on. Um, food, car maintenance, and personal expenses. That's where, you know, movies and clo um, clothing and anything else. Also, if you um, have children, you probably want to have includes like school supplies and stuff like that. But this is just for you know an average single person. They wouldn't have to include that. Then you total the fixed expenses and you total the flexible expenses, and then you add them together to get the total expenses per month. Now you have your total income, your total fixed expenses, your total flexible expenses. You subtract the expenses from the income, and you get your net income. Now, here are tips to decrease spending and save money. Because, let's be honest, who does not want to save money? Carry only small amounts of cash with you. And use direct deposit. Control your use of credit cards. You really don't need more than one. Don't shop for fun. That always leads you to trouble and into debt, probably. Take written goals with you. Whenever you go shopping, especially when you're shopping for big items. 
buy only what you need, and just because it's on sale doesn't mean you need to buy it. Use coupons to save money. And use a grocery shopping list to prevent impulse buying. Only buy what's on the list, especially when grocery shopping. And pay bills on time to avoid fees and extra finance charges. And especially so you don't go into debt, only buy what you, can, what you need, only buy what you can afford. Your Ferrari can wait for a while. Now we're talking about savings. Do you eat out at restaurants a lot? Cut back, eat more at home. Can you cut back on daily expenses like coffee and candy and Starbucks? Do you have any services you really don't need like Netflix? Use direct deposit as an auto transfer to savings. If you get a raise or bonus, consider it extra money. Put it into savings because trust me, there's going to be a day you're going to need um, a couple of thousand dollars for something, some type of emergency and that's what you want to have your savings for. If you pay a loan off, make sure those, make those payments to you. You did pay the loan off. You deserve to um, reward yourself a little bit. Put at least what your company matches in a 401k plan because Retirement is going to approach a lot faster than you, one, what you think. And this, if you put a lot of savings aside now when you're younger, you won't have to worry about it as much when you're older and when there's more of a chance of having to use that money for other things like medical emergencies. Save as much as you can from your tax refund. And remember, you also have to save for college and for other big things. So save a lot. It's better to save it than to spend it. Money management tips for collagens. Well, take control of your money so it doesn't control you. Money is an inanimate, and is an inanimate object. It should not control you. Determine your financial needs for the future. Are you going to grad school? Are you going to be doing studying abroad? Are you going to be working during the summer? Are you going to be doing, taking classes during the summer? Use a checking account. That's one of the best ways that you don't have to carry a lot of cash around you. And research to find the best bank or credit union for you in the local area, especially if you're moving far away. You don't want to have to use the bank you had unless it's the national branch um, that you had when you lived. Read your financial aid documents carefully and be aware of all obligations. Do you have to meet certain GPAs? Um, especially if the financial aid and our loans, then you want to make sure you are aware of fees and when you have to pay it back by. Keep looking for new scholarships, grants, and opportunities for work study. These are the best ways to pay for your college and for your expenses, and you don't have to pay them back. They're the best way to invest for your future. Student loans are an investment for your future, like I said, but they put you in debt. So try not to use them unless they're absolutely necessary, and then look for the best ones that have the lowest amount of interest and the best plan for you to pay off. Working during college can help you, but make sure it doesn't keep you from doing successful in college because the whole purpose of going to college in the first place is to do well. Take advantage of the Career Center. It's there for you to find good jobs and internships, especially paid ones. Living in the dorm can be fun but stressful. I mean, food is a large student expense, but if you go off campus in an apartment, they have to pay for rent and you pay for food there too. So find the best one for you that you can afford the most and that will be the best option. Don't let your friends pressure you into unnecessary spending. They're not the ones that have to live with you live living in debt. You do. Maintain control of your credit card. Have one credit card, shop around, look for the best deal, and pay the bill on time. That's the worst thing to do is when you have to use that money, you'd rather be spending on yourself than um, instead of using it to um, pay for fees because you didn't pay on time. Thank you for watching and additional information about banking can be found at these sites.